Hello and welcome back to my channel. I was just saying to Jo, it must be Saturday because it's raining and that's so typical when I go to group. Right, I'm back from group, I have my result and I'm happy to say it's a result I deserved. I said this week I was moving forward, I'd have one A choice, two B choices, five to 10 sins a day. Well, I've actually averaged nine and a half sins each day. I've had coconut oil on top of that a couple of days and also a new discovery for me, coconut butter, which is divine. So if you get a chance to try it, it's really worth a go. And my result for this week is a two pound loss. I'm happy with that. It still has me out of the bottom of target, but if this is where my body wants to be, I'm happy to just go with it for now see where it takes me. I'm not trying to lose weight. I am trying to eat healthily on a weekly basis and include healthy fats and wise choices. I have had meat this week and I have had fish this week. So it wasn't a vegetarian week. And yeah, I think I really got the result I deserved and I'm comfortable with it. I walked 25.72 miles this week, which is again down on our average. And that was purely because of lack of time. We've had a really whirlwind, busy week, quite a bit of traveling this week, and only had an opportunity to walk four times. So we have a lovely hill walk that we do, which averages just over six miles, about 6.4. And we've literally, we've done it three times this week and we've been into the city once. So hence my figures are down, but it was enough. Um, what I have to be really careful about is that I don't rely on exercise to, um, how can I put it, to influence my weight. What I need to be aware of is what I put in my mouth for me that makes a difference to my weight. I cannot out-exercise a bad diet. And also I don't need to do some over-the-top amount of exercise I mean, I'm 60 when all's said and done. I don't like the gym, I've tried it. I love walking. I don't need to be pushing myself and pushing myself and pushing myself and then not refueling my body or fueling my body in the first place. It's really important for me to find a balance, which is much more about how I eat rather than how much I exercise purely because there will be times when I can't keep up that level of exercise and I don't want my weight to struggle because my exercise is down. I want it to be much more based on making right choices around food. So that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Um, jo has a little list of the few things I wanted to touch on today because I've been rushing around this morning, uh, been to group, been shopping, uh, been to the health food shop, been to Asda, been to Tesco's, and raced home and if I don't make a little note of what I intend to say the chances are everything will just disappear out of my head so what's next on my list Jo? High five bars. High five bars. Now last week I said I was going to have a week without high five bars and I did. I didn't have any high five bars for seven days in a row. Let me be honest about how it's affected me. I have a headache. Now whether I would have had a headache this week, I don't know, but I've had it all week and it's here. Just like somebody's got a pair of glasses pressing on the head. I'm putting it down to sugar withdrawals because I don't eat very much uh, sugar loaded food. It might just be the fact that I would have had a headache this week anyway. Um, I haven't even gone to the trouble of taking any paracetamol to alleviate it. I've just gone with it, so it can't be that bad, can it? I haven't wanted a hi-fi bar, or should I say I haven't felt I needed a hi-fi bar this week, and I was having two every day. And I have been having two every day for months. So I actually don't think it's done me any harm at all to sort of desist from that and make a different choice. I asked on last week's video for some ideas, and I want to thank everybody who gave me an idea for a healthy extra B choice, some brilliant ones. I have made different choices this week. I haven't felt deprived and I'm still sticking to three meals a day. So I haven't needed anything um, that you would call a snack in between, which is where my high five bars used to come in. 
I've included what I've chosen for my healthy extra bees as part of my meal. Two of the things that I've chosen and really, really enjoyed are a recommendation from Eva G in Spain, which is the thin original rye crisp breads. These are three for a healthy extra bee. And they are actually quite filling because they are very crisp, quite thick, and really good vehicle for putting cottage cheese or nut butter or whatever you're choosing to spend your sins on. I tend to go for Langley Farm cottage cheese and I like the full fat version. So I would sin that and put it on these. Um, I think Eva suggested you could put a thin scraping of jam on them. You could put honey on them. Depends whether you lean towards a sweet tooth or like me, you lean towards a savoury tooth. I'm actually thinking of um, maybe, uh, what was the butter I was looking at? Almond and coconut mixed. Yeah. Almond and coconut butter. So I may be thinking of trying that this week on them. But they're really nice. They're also nice with a bowl of homemade soup. I've had them that way this week and thoroughly enjoyed them. And then my other choice that I've really enjoyed is fresh coconut. And these are little chunks of fresh coconut which we've just bought in Asda. This is one pound for 120 grams. 35 grams is a healthy extra bee choice. And in my maths, that would be this small pack is approximately 20 sins. So although, you know, it's a good healthy thing to have, it's an easy way to push your sins over your limit. So as I say, 35 grams for a healthy extra bee. And that is actually enough. You know you've had it. So I've enjoyed that. I've also been eating um, organic walnuts this week. Five halves of walnuts is a healthy extra bee. So most enjoyable. And it's made me look at changing and not just relying on um, hi-fi bars. There's nothing wrong with hi-fi bars. I'm not saying don't buy them, don't eat them. In my mind, they're one of those things that in moderation are fine. You know, we need a variety of food in our diet. And if you enjoy them, they fit your lifestyle, then eat them. I, I'm really not trying to influence anybody to change what they eat. I'm just coming back to you on a Saturday with a kind of overview of what I've done this week. And I'm certainly not saying I will never eat high fi bars again, because I will. Chocolate orange is my particular favourite. And I am looking forward to the Chocomocha coffee ones, uh, which um, do include coffee. Somebody had pointed out on my comments that there was no coffee in them, but Joe checked on the box because we have some in group and there is coffee. It's at the bottom end of the ingredient list, but there is coffee in them. I, for one, intend to try them. Maybe not a whole box, maybe just a couple. So, next on my list, Joe. Products. Oh, no. mm. those mm. were my yeah. products, so I've included them in what I was saying. Ruffle fries. Yeah, you know me, and let me just put these down. You know me and my raffle look. Well, I got second prize in the group raffle today, and it was this. Is that in the right place? A mm, little bit up. Yeah, that's good. It's an electric omelet maker. Makes two semicircular omelets, thermostatically controlled. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you know, it's quite funny because Joe and I are trying to live much more as minimalists. And uh, Joe kind of views, let's put it back. Joe kind of views things as we have enough possessions. So really, if you want to bring something in, you have to be prepared to let something go. And when I got in the car with that, he went, hmm, are you prepared to sacrifice your Le Creuset omelette pan in favour of an electric one? Do you know what? I think he's serious. So the omelette maker may be looking for a new home because I'd rather have my Le Creuset omelette pan, if I'm honest. But it's funny this week, we've been looking more at minimalism, haven't we, Joe? Yeah. We're always trying to simplify our life. We simplify the way we eat as in we only use fresh products and very, very rarely processed food now. And, uh, well, Joe doesn't eat processed food at all. I have the occasional thing. 
But one of the things, again, I've been looking at lately is shoes. I have an absolute passion for shoes. And where I used to reward myself and treat myself with food, I've kind of slipped sideways a bit into um, much more rewarding myself and treating myself with shoes. And I managed to buy three pairs yesterday. <laughs> and I was thinking this morning, oh Lord, what if he says I have to get rid of three? But yeah, I must stop this. It is quite... I, I always seem to lean towards an obsessive behaviour of some kind. I mean, Richard would tell you over the years it's been many different things. But at the moment it seems to be shoes. So I really ought to make a declaration on here. I will not. Oh, I will not. I will try not to buy any more shoes for six months. So that takes me up to my birthday. So, yeah. It's on there now, Joe. It's on YouTube. Mm. Mum will not buy another pair of shoes for six months. I'm glad. <laughs> You're all witness to that. So, yes. Next subject. Next subject is group including banning the word treat and why. Oh, yeah. Fabulous group this morning. Not as big. I think there was only probably 65, 60 plus people there today. Um, I think that you know, after Christmas, when we get the influx of people in January and it tends to sort of lessen a bit through February, well, it seems to have spilled over into March this year. And I think this week was the first week where I've actually thought there are fewer people here. And um, so some of those people are starting to drop off. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll be back next week. But our weight loss this week was only around the sort of 50, 55 pound mark, which is way down on what it has been the last few weeks and I think Naomi took an opportunity really to get us motivated again because we can all kind of get a bit familiar with it can't we and sometimes we just need to reignite that motivation so we had a really good talk in the group this morning uh, we didn't do a massive amount of image therapy because everybody joined in on the discussion and then we did a little bit of image therapy and if people had needs that need a meeting we talked about things like that but we were very much looking at the for and against of slimming world and you know looking at what we do sometimes to self-sabotage and the reasons for um, doing this plan and as we took up different ideas in the group the same things come out don't they year after year after year it's about health it's about dress size, it's about occasions and these are the fours, you know, it's about um, confidence, all of these things come up and then the against, so like what's the biggest thing against doing this plan and I can honestly say most of the time when I've sat in group and this has come up as part of the discussion, the first thing that comes up for being against us working this plan is us ourselves. We are our own worst enemies and I know so many times I have been my own worst enemy because I can get in my own way all the time. And Naomi's very much encouraged us this week to look at why we do this and how we do this and, you know, ways of stopping doing it. And one of the things that had come out for me this, this week is looking at the different kinds of behaviour that I am prepared to let go of. There's always going to be stubborn things that you hang on to because they're comfort zones. So I have things that I hang on to and I can honestly say without making conscious effort a lot of those things are starting to slide away. We went to visit my sister-in-law on Thursday and while Jo was in the kitchen making coffee she gave me some chocolates, uh, some dark chocolates, because she knows that I really favour dark chocolate. And I said, I really didn't ought to, but thinking, oh, wow, well, yeah, I did. And she said, well, if you just have one at a time, you can sim them, because she knows I do Slimming World. And I put them in my oversized handbag. And I never mentioned it to Jo. And there was a thread of a thought at the back of my mind, which was, hang on, Joe didn't see that. Joe doesn't know. I can eat these in the privacy of my own lounge or when Joe's out or whatever, and I could get away with this. And then as quick as that, the thought came, but why would you, Jane? 
That's what you used to do. Why would you carry on and do that? And then we went on to visit my mum after we'd been to my sister-in-law's. And the first thing I did when I got to mum's was unzip my handbag, take the chocolates out and give them to my mum because she loves dark chocolate just as much as I do. And Joe was astounded. A was astounded that we're in there and B was astounded that I actually gave them away. And I think some people would call that willpower. I don't, because I don't think I've got willpower. I'm calling it common sense today. Because something else Naomi talked about in group, which really, really helped me this morning was, as a group, we have decided from today to ban the word treat. And we're reinforcing it because we've, we've touched on this before in group and said it's not a healthy word for us to bandy about. Why do we use the word treat? You treat a dog with a chocolate drop or a doggy chocolate drop when it's learnt how to sit or it's learnt to do its business on command or whatever. We're not dogs. We don't need to be treated like that with food. Now, this came up in group apparently well, no, not apparently. This came up in group because a lady in group had said to herself before she came to group this morning, if I lose two pounds today, I can treat myself tonight by having pizza from Pizza Hut with my kids. She got on the scales and she lost a pound, which is good. I think that's excellent. But she was disappointed in herself because it meant she couldn't treat herself with pizza tonight with her kids. And she shared this story in group and Naomi said, whoa, hang on a minute, treat yourself with pizza. Why is pizza a treat? Why isn't pizza, having pizza just a part of your Slimming World plan? And she said, oh, but Naomi, you know, you can't do that. You can't indulge yourself like that and treat yourself like that and be on plan. And Naomi said, I beg to differ. I'm telling this story a bit anecdotally because I don't want to highlight anybody from group. But Naomi said, I beg to differ. You can eat Pizza Hut pizza and be on plan. All you have to do is make the decision before you do it to look up how many sins it is, make a choice about how many pieces of pizza you intend to have and then stick to it. So Naomi got the book, she looked, she said, which pizza do you favour? And the lady said, pepperoni, something or other, I can't remember. Anyway, it's in the book and I think it was page 89. This particular pizza is ten and a half sins a slice. And she said to the lady, how many slices would you have had before when you had pizza with your kids? And she said, five. And Naomi said, and that's sixty two and a half sins, perfectly acceptable. Because if you choose to have that tonight and you own it and you stop there instead of thinking I've blown it and carry on, those 62 and a half sins deducted from your weekly sins still leave you six sins every day for the rest of the week. Would that be sufficient? And the lady said yes. So Naomi said, Naomi said, have your pizza, enjoy it, own it and walk away guilt free because you are on plan. And lots of the newer people in group were so encouraged by that. Because I think when you're quite new in group, I know when I was quite new in group, we do tend to treat this plan like a diet. And you think, I can't have that. I can't get away with that. We need to get away from thinking like that. Because if we're planning to try and get away with something, we're not owning what we're eating. I can't today plan to get away with anything, which is why I gave the chocolates away. Because the old thought was still there, but the behaviour has changed. And I did not resent giving those chocolates away, even though they were from Hotel Chocolat, they were some of my favourites. I actually didn't want them. Not didn't need them, not willpowered my way, not white knuckled it. I didn't want them. So, yeah, that's where I'm at today with regard to things like that. And it is freedom. And I am changing, ever changing, and still loving this plan. Loving the food I'm eating, loving the way I'm living, and I never feel deprived. 
Was there another topic on the list, Jim? Um, well, realised can't have foot in both camps. Yeah, that continues really from what I'm saying. Um, the old me had both feet firmly in the camp of I love to overindulge myself, I love instant gratification, I want to be able to eat whatever I want whenever I want. I had at least a thousand excuses why I should be able to do it. I could justify my behaviour irrespective of whatever it was by saying everybody else does it, why shouldn't I? The simplest justification in the world. What everybody else does isn't any of my business. What everybody else does will only affect their weight, won't affect mine. I've realised today that the camp I'm in today is I am a target member. I know where my boundaries are. I'm comfortable with those boundaries. I can eat as a vegetarian when I choose to. I can eat as a non-vegetarian when I choose to doesn't seem to have any dramatic effect on my weight. I choose today not to drink fizzy drinks the way I used to, so I've got a foot in a different camp. Today I choose to drink drinks I enjoy that don't blow me up and bloat me and stop me digesting my food properly, which is what fizzy drinks did to me. I'm in a totally different camp, but the decision I've made as part of this journey has got me to the place where I finally realise, for me, and I'm only talking about me, I'm not judging where you want to live and what you want to do, but for me today, I cannot have a foot in both camps. Because all that does is, leads to me torturing myself, leads to me feeling deprived, leads to me looking for treats, looking for cheats, looking for justification. I don't need to stand in the queue on a Saturday morning today and fear the scales. Because even though I had a gain last week, I was comfortable standing in the queue. I got the result I deserved for whatever reason. I don't need to analyse it. I was bang on plan. This week, standing in the queue, having a good laugh with Kelvin, no stress at all. I do not fear the scales. Bang on plan again. Got the result I deserved. And it's because I've got both feet in the camp that says I'm now living at Target, I've changed my lifestyle. I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm not saying I'll never slip up, but when I do slip up or when I make differing choices, I intend to own them today instead of trying to justify them or make excuses for them. So yeah, a brilliant week on plan, a really whirlwind busy week, but that's living. And that's what I'm doing today. I am living this plan and I am living my life. Now in the group this morning, one of the against that came up in, in discussion was what gets in the way of us working this plan? Life does. Well, I'm trying to learn to acknowledge that life happens, shit happens, but equally in life, brilliant things happen. Blessings happen, great things happen, celebrations happen. But all of that stuff for me today does not have to revolve around food. It just has to revolve around living this plan, enjoying the food, and nothing is banned. Everything's permitted, you just have to count it. So, yeah, fabulous week. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Thanks for being there. Thanks for all your support and encouragement. Thanks for the healthy extra B choices from last week. And yeah. Oh, Mum, one last. Oh, I'm hang on. Appreciating your consultant. Oh, yes, this is something Joe and I were talking about coming home from Tesco. Excuse me, I'm starving, hungry, I haven't eaten, and that's my own fault. I've heard and been a party to over the years many times people criticising consultants. Now, we know there are different calibres. Uh, there are different calibre of consultants out there and some of them have been doing it for years and do it really well and some of them have been doing it for years and don't do it so well and there are some incredible young consultants out there I think it was Elaine Classy Chick said she's got an incredible young consultant but I think what's been striking me lately is being a consultant or being a member brings about a two-way street it's a relationship 
Now, somebody had said to me a couple of weeks ago, if you could see Jane, would you opt to become a Slimming World consultant? And the answer would be no, it's a thankless task. I'm not at a place in my life or an age in my life where I need a job anyway. I would not do what Naomi does for a king's ransom. Pardon me, she does it really well. She's committed, she's dedicated. I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it justice. I haven't got the patience. But do you know what? I think for most consultants out there today, they put an awful lot of work in and get very, very little appreciation. What I want to encourage us to do, and I'm not by any means telling anybody they need to do this, I'm just saying I'm gonna do it this week. I want to encourage each and every one of us, if you feel inclined, to show some appreciation to your consultant this week. This week I mean between now and next Saturday, so everybody should have a group between now and next Saturday. It doesn't need to cost you a fortune, it could just be a little thank you card, a bunch of daffs, a hug, that's free. But whatever you think of your consultant, try and I know for me, I need to look at it as a two-way relationship. I cannot just keep expecting to take from my consultant without showing some appreciation and giving something back to my group. It's vital that we show them they are, I was going to say loved, that might be too strong a word, but that they are appreciated. So will anybody join me in that please? And if you want to do it, you want to do it on the quiet, you don't want to talk about it, you don't want to tell the rest of us, or if you want to do it and you want to tell everybody in the comments below what you did to show, I mean, we don't know your consultants, it's anonymous in that way. But please, let's show them that they matter to us. Because if we want them to be better, we need to firstly show them that we care. And I feel quite passionately about that this week. So is anybody please prepared to join me in that? Let's start a week of Appreciate a Slow World Consultant. Right, that's it. I'm going now, I'm going to eat. Thanks for being there. And as I say, it works if you work it, it won't if you don't. And I'm focusing on it works if I work it and it won't if I don't. And the rewards I'm getting from it are beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> Thanks everybody, see you next week. Oh, and it might be a bit late going up next week because we've got commitments. So if I'm not there on Saturday afternoon, I will be there at some point. Cheers, bye.